Welcome to Facts TV News, where everything is true. Forensic evidence help police not murder suspect in Kingston. The Kingston Western Police say evidence collected at the scene of a murder in the division in 2019 assisted them in identifying and nabbing the alleged killer. Derek Bender, a 54-year-old resident of Fort Avenue in Vineyard Town, was charged on Wednesday with the murder of 57-year-old Carl Clark, a businessman and shop owner of Greenwich Crescent, Kingston 5. Mr. Clark was found murdered at his home on Tuesday, June 25, 2019. Investigators say thieves broke into the house and attacked Mr. Clark, whose body was found with the hands and feet bound. Senior Superintendent Michael Phillips, head of Kingston Western Police, told reporters that forensic evidence collected at the crime scene assisted investigators in identifying the suspect who was recently captured during a police operation. Man charged with 2021 murder in Rosetown, Kingston. The Kingston Western Police say they have made a breakthrough in a deadly attack in the community of Rosetown two years ago, in which a man was fatally shot by men carrying high powered rifles. Two other persons were injured in the incident. The victim, 31 year old Ricardo Anthony Williams, a bearer of Fitzgerald Avenue, was killed on July 7, 2021. The Kingston Western CIB says it has charged 22 year old Jordan Ruffell for the murder. Jordan was charged Thursday with murder, illegal possession of firearm, illegal possession of ammunition, and shooting with intent. Investigators say a group of people were playing a game of dominoes at the intersection of Harry Street and Tewari Crescent in Rosetown when a motor car with men aboard drove up. The men alighted from the vehicle with rifles and handguns and opened fire on the group. Mr. Williams was shot and later pronounced dead at hospital. Two other victims were hospitalized. More than a dozen spent shells were recovered from the scene. 34-year-old mechanic charged robbery in St. Mary A 34-year-old mechanic has been stopped with multiple charges after an armed robbery in the parish back in July. Charged robbery aggravation, possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized access to ammunition, and using a firearm to commit a felony is John Marston, otherwise called Johnny, of Frontier of Port Mara, St. Mary. According to reports, a woman was in the process of closing a business establishment where she works when she was pounced upon by two men wearing masks. One of the men robbed the woman of a Samsung cell phone and over $50,000. The police were alerted and an investigation was launched. John was charged on Friday, October 27. His court date has not yet been finalized. Beaches Stout's alleged hitman claims police inserted lies in statements. Denvalin Minto, the second witness in the Everton Beaches Stout McDonald murder trial, alleged during cross examination on Friday that the police inserted incorrect information in statements that he gave to them. Beaches Stout is on trial in the Home Circuit Court in downtown Kingston for the murder of his second wife, Tonya McDonald. Oscar Barnes, who allegedly stabbed Tonya to death on July 20, 2020, and set her and her motor vehicle on fire, is also on trial. In court on Friday, Christopher Towson, one of the four defense attorneys, quizzed Minto about statements he's made to the police about certain detailings he had with Tonya before she was killed. Towson asked Minto if he recalled telling the police that Tonya had given him a cell phone at one point, and the witness responded, saying, No, sir. I did not tell the police these things. Yes, sir, it is my signature, but this is not what I told the police. I cannot read, so the police read it back to me. The police told a lie, Minto stated. Thousand then asked Minto if he recalled telling the police in his statement that he told Tonya that a gun she was looking to buy would cost her $220,000. Minto said, I did not tell the police that. The police put all of that together. The police wrote all the statements I gave them, and I signed. I gave a statement and I saw some papers in front of me, so I signed for it. Although the witness is serving an almost 20-year sentence for being the contractor in the murder of Tonya, he claimed in court, that I never kill a soul for my barn. Two months, no autopsy. Murdered by Smurland woman, family in pain. Monday, October 30, will make two months since businesswoman Latifa Helps was brutally murdered in Westmoreland. Her family is feeling hopeless as they impatient to wait for an autopsy to be carried out, said Danny Kelp, sister of the deceased. I know the situation in Jamaica, where they say it's one government pathologist, but she has been there almost two months now, and every time we go to the parlor, 
they keep telling us that we have to wait for an autopsy from Kingston, she be mourned. According to Yannick, the family was told that a list with the names of those slated for autopsies is sent from Kingston weekly. However, Latifah's name has not yet turned up on the list. Each time it is just one or two names coming down, and when this list goes up, her name is not on it. We just can't get any concrete from anybody at all to say why Yannick complained. The 39-year-old businesswoman, also known as Slatty, was gone down on September 4 in front of her establishment, Lattie Sports Bar and Restaurant, along Bay Road in Little London, Westmoreland. She also ran a Supreme Ventures gaming outlet. An initial report from the Westmoreland Police has stated that the killing was a case of mistaken identity. Reports indicated that Lativa arrived at her establishment shortly after 8 a.m. when she was confronted by a men on a motorcycle. The men allegedly asked her to identify herself. She ran off, but was chased and shot. Her alleged killers were subsequently attacked by a machete wheeling residents in bizarre turn of events. It was reported that while trying to escape, the men were struck by a bus whose driver had witnessed the incident. The gunmen reported they ran into nearby bushes and were chased by squares of anchor residents who police said chopped one of them multiple times. He later succumbed to his injuries and another man was arrested by the police. While struggling to deal with the loss of their loved one, Yannick Helps told reporters that her family is also growing weary as information showing the timeline of Lativa's autopsy was limited. The family has reportedly attempted to pull all the stops to expedite the process, however, these attempts have yielded no success. We are just feeling helpless and hopeless regarding getting anything together for her. Everywhere we turn to see how we can do something, we have a roadblock. We have, oft we have offered to pay for the autopsy to be done because I know you can do it privately, but they say we can't because it is a government case, she stated. And he continued, however, nobody is talking about it or talking to us. We're just sitting down helpless and hopeless. We have gone to the polo a lot. We have tried calling by the officers in charge. Of course, I tried to reach out to the MP and other leaders in the area, but everybody said that they will get back to us and we have not heard anything since, Yannick continued. With nowhere else to turn, Yannick stated that members of her distraught family were anxiously sitting at the edge of their seats, waiting on a call to see that they can finally put Lativa to rest. One of my uncles was here and he had to leave. Everybody is waiting. Some people were here already and had to go back and it stated. We are really hoping to hear that we are going to get the autopsy done soon or if it is a case where we can pay to do it privately, then we would do that. I got to understand that it is not an everyday thing that autopsies are done by the government, so we have to just pay for it. We are willing to do that so we can get our sister, our loved one, to be buried, she stated. In the meantime, the businesswoman's murder has been particularly hard on her father. It has not been going well. It has not been good at all, especially for my father. I am having a rough time too, because he is now staying with me. So much morning after 3 o'clock, I cannot sleep. He keeps talking about how they kill his daughter, and he can't get to bury her, she stated. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification.